R&B Reptiles here. We're up in Canada and we're in Toronto hanging out with some friends of ours, Megan and Mark from Northern Gecko. And yeah, Mark and Megan. This is Megan. Mark. This is Megan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so they got some really awesome animals. They never let people video up here and we talked them into it. And so you guys get to hang out and come along for the ride and see some of their awesome animals and look at some of their cool projects. So stay tuned. <laughs> So we're with Mark Orfus and he's the owner of Northern Gecko and uh, he doesn't really get on camera a lot so you know we're just gonna ask him some questions and uh, yeah so when did you start Northern Gecko and where'd you come from? I guess I started you know when I was young I mm. you know just bred a few geckos I was doing something else I had a, you know another job and just like everyone else you know you mm. all you start with uh, you know some some reptiles that you think are really cool and you start breeding them and then back in the day back then I guess there wasn't that many people this would have been 15 maybe 20 20 years ago mm. um, and we didn't you know like people liked what I was doing and crusty geckos were new and sold sold a whole bunch of them and ended up realizing there was you know more to that and more of the passion of that than property management, which is what I was doing, and uh, property so management it, is so exciting. Yeah, it's it really fun. is. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave it a try, yeah. and uh, here we are today. Now with about eight, nine thousand square feet of uh, dry goods and you know animals and That's all awesome. sorts of stuff, and it's fun and enjoy coming to work every day and Built have a, and have a great team of people here. Yeah, and one is right here, Come, Megan. Come step into the photo for a second here. Yeah, this, okay. We got this. Is, it's real. Because it's not just about me. It's about other people that oh, that no. help us, right? Yeah. Get, tell us a little bit about yourself here at Northern Gecko. Yeah. Let's um, talk about this. Okay. Yeah. You might have Good seen job. me at shows. I mainly go to shows in Canada and the states with Mark. Um, I do animal care. I do sales here. Some website stuff. I run the Instagram. I'm the person answering all your messages. <laughs> mm, yeah, which we have a lot sometimes. Yeah. And, <laughs> so yeah, so it's a lot about you know who you're meeting and, and the networking of it, and also the animals, the really cool animals that you produce. Um, but then it's also a business, you know. So Mark, you know, got involved and <laughs> just did the old switcheroo. He was on that side. <laughs> so, but yeah, no. So we're just gonna see some of the really cool animals you have. So what do you got there, Megan? Uh, this is one of five of our Australian frilled dragons. We actually have a tank set up behind us. And yeah. we have three of them in here right now and two in a different tank. Awesome bioactive setup. Yeah. yeah. So the, Megan's also doing isopods, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> isopods crawling around in the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So, well that's really cool and uh, let's see some of your other stuff. I mean, I know you guys do a lot of crusteds and but you guys have a lot of other stuff too. Uh, we just we took a whole tour of the facility and um, they're kind of closing up. We got up here a little late. They're closing up for the day, so we didn't really get around to doing everything. So we kind of just pulled a couple animals, and we're just going to show you guys what they got, you know? So, all right, let's get to it. So, uh, we took the boys on a tool, tour earlier, like, you know, very quickly around, and we went into one of the greater tracky enclosures, and uh, both, we thought both the male and the female would be inside the tube. I showed him, and there was only one inside, I showed Ben, yeah. and he says, no, there's two. And I said, no, there's only one. He goes, no, there's that big one and, and a baby. Yeah. And we were blown away because it's going to be spring and usually they would give babies in the fall. But we got a brand new, stunning, tracky baby. And yeah. Megan's going to show it. I don't know if you can, you can't really yeah, see it. But we'll no, show you. See it. Yeah. So we're going to get a close up. So what are, what are the tracking? Like what, it, what is the, so it's a big gecko. A greater track Uranus, which is... Uh, Track Uranus, track Uranus. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, and this has some beautiful spotting on it, um, mm -hmm. unlike anything I've seen. And this still has, it looks like it hasn't even come out of its first shed yet. Uh, so we expect probably there'll be another one in there also uh, mm -hmm. shortly thereafter. Am I in the frame? You're yeah. in the frame. Okay. Yeah. You're good. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you if you're not in the frame. And he can turn the camera too. So that's really cool. 
And yeah. I, I don't know, did we bring any adults and, to show? No. no. Okay. But did you name it? That's really the important yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. Everybody decided that we're going to name this one R&B because you guys were the ones who so, so we've made it. We've actually arrived. We've done something. You'll be a part of the future breeding group. <laughs> yes. That's what we've been trying to do our whole life. We have R&B breeding with something else, you know? Like and if I'm not mistaken, so we, there is a gecko named Orphis out there, is it not? <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> if I think not, there will be. I think Leland has it. I think it Leland has it. That's awesome. Okay. So yeah, it's really cool to find a baby and it was exciting to see and I didn't think it was anything of it until these guys were like, what? That wasn't supposed to happen. So it's pretty exciting. We very, like a very unusual time of the year for this. So. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So now shot in 3D. <laughs> no, this is a hypo. <laughs> now <laughs> shot in 3D. Okay, go. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay, never mind. So this is a new Amy. This is a uh, hypo new Amy. There are not many of these out there, but I believe there are others. Maybe not pure locality. Uh, she's got a singles ad out. She's looking for a mate. So if anyone out there knows another hypomelanistic lychee that wants to come for a date, um, we would love to, to Canada. Yeah, yeah, to Canada. Jesus. We would love to breed her to another. So she's always this color mm. and always this pattern. She's awesome. We'll get a close up. <laughs> it's really 3D at the moment. <laughs> you see that? So much editing to do. You see that? That's beautiful. Look, That's awesome. look at him. You see that? That's 3D. 3D. No gloss is required. And you can, you guys can, if you get close to the screen, you can actually smell the, yeah, the, the lychee here. Smell a vision. Okay. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah, it's, beautiful. they're really nice. They're really beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. So, Mark, what do you got there? <laughs> That's my question. This, so. this is a Grand Terra Lychianus. This is the fabled and rare type, pure type C Lychianus. Very large, almost mm -hmm. ready to breed. We have not uh, put them together yet. We have a, we have a boy and a girl. They're going to go together this season for the first time. We've been growing them out for about three and a half years now. And... What's their locality? Well, that's the interesting thing. So the localities uh, that of type C, if you go back to one of the old uh, texts, which would be uh, the Rapashi Philippe de Vaugelay text, they had mentioned that the type C uh, is a uh, type that was felled from a tree, and I believe it was brought in uh, by, by the Trempers, and was one of the largest locales. So they don't know where it came from exactly, Mm -hmm. But they know it's from the from the main island of Grand Terre, and um, there were very few specimens brought in, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much you know all that's known about it. And they're they're very rare and high, hard to find. There are very few breeders that have pure ones. There are some that have uh, uh, some that are part mm -hmm. type C and part other other. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's beautiful, and it is, it's really big, and you guys are going to be breeding some of these now, right? This yeah, season, so hopefully we may have some eggs. Uh, and how many eggs do they have usually a year? Leeches, you're not, you, you may have none yeah. in a season, that happens, sure. uh, or you may have up to maybe two to three clutches. That okay, would be, that would and be two to three season. clutches, and usually like one or two eggs a clutch? Yeah, one or two eggs per clutch, yeah. exactly. So... It's, they're really cool. I think that they are a good pet. They're not like crazy hard to keep, but, um, very easy, but they, if you're looking to breed them, they're rewarding, harder, harder to breed, harder to breed. And they don't produce as much as, you know, some animals out there. You're thinking, oh man, they're going to produce all this stuff, but it's possible. Like you were saying, like one egg a year is, is pretty common. Um, and they so, may, yeah. And they may not, the other thing is when we put them together, there's a pub, we run the possibility they may not like each other. Yeah, if they don't like true. each other, they will destroy each other. <laughs> so we will have to separate them and then try again another time. Um, and is it true that they kind of like like the same exit? Like if you get to the pair, they'll it'll be like those two for from now on. Like they don't they, like anybody else. They and, will pair bond uh, yeah. for multiple years, hopefully. But the other thing is, as soon as they like each other, they could easily just not like each other get divorced. again at any point Man. in time. They could just say, "It's tough. I don't like you anymore." <laughs> and uh, then you walk in one day and they're, you know, there's, you know, ripped open and you yeah. separate right away. It happens. 
Um, so it's yeah. it's uh, it's not always easy, you know, breeding them, but it's rewarding. But when we yeah, get them. and they're great uh, as you know, if you're just keeping one or two, uh, just to have because they're really awesome. They have these really cool feet. I really like the feet on them. The eyes are just awesome. So uh, if you guys get to see these in person, there's nothing like it. So thank you. See You're the welcome, next one. man. <laughs> wow, you guys are so polite. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear you guys do a lot with the lily whites, but this is not a lily white. What do we got going on here? So this was one of the productions from, I believe, 2014, before we even got males imported from lily exotics in the UK. Okay. And she was just known as our creamy quad, and she looks like a lily, and everybody loves her online, but she does not carry the lily gene. Oh, well, that's She's awesome. A really nice high white. Has she bred yet? Yeah, we have her in a breeding group. Does she reproduce that color? We are holding back her eggs and raising them separately to okay. see if they turn out like her. So it's a kind of a special project. That's awesome. Yeah. It's very beautiful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ryan, why do you got the wood in your hand? <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, so we're checking out some agurnia, and we love Australian species army reptiles. So let's talk about this. This is super exciting. Okay, so I'm going to come out of the closet right now because no one really knows that we've been breeding Agurnia for a little while. Uh, these are two baby uh, Agurnia epsisolis. Um, we've, we're have we working with many different species. We've got epsisolis, we have Depressa, we've got Hosmeri, we've got Cunningham Eye, wow. we've got, um, well, we've got Stokes Eye, uh, Signitos, a whole bunch of different ones. And we finally, you know, produce some really beautiful uh, offspring, and we're looking forward to producing more this coming season. Um, and that's all there is to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nothing, more, no big deal at all. Just an awesome list of really rare Australian skinks. <laughs> this, is, this is really so, cool. So kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, having fun with them, little babies. So here at Northern Gecko, we have a very special, intimate relationship with Mr. Alan Rapash. I've known him for many years. And that gives us, uh, we, we collaborate on stuff. Obviously, he makes all the formulas. But if I show you up close, I'm sure you guys will recognize we'll Cherry this Bomb. Up. This is Rapashi Cherry Bomb. It's a seasonal blend. And then Megan will show you if you recognize. Well, we already did it earlier, but we got her to open her mouth. Just like that, and then we took a quick shot, and it was great. So that's, that's, awesome. this is Megan's photo here on the cover, and she's done a few things. She's really good with the camera, and uh, she did a cherry bomb photo, among other photos, for <laughs> Mr. Rapashi. It's awesome. And his formulas. This video is brought to you by Rapashi, just so you guys know. Rapashi.com, Rapashi.ca. <laughs> northerngecko.net, northerngecko.com, northerngecko.ca, <laughs> tilde slash, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll put, Try all of those URLs. We'll, we'll put all the, all the connections in the description below. Let's check it out. Okay, so what do you got there? So this, you're talking about the cherry bomb. Um, so this is a gargoyle. Do you want to explain, like, what this is and, yeah, what your, how you came up with this? And um, How did you come up with it? Yeah. How did you invent that gecko? <laughs> With a lot of other geckos. <laughs> wow, it's mind blowing. Uh, uh, so this gark here is from our group 16. We've posted a couple online on our Instagram about that group. Mm -hmm. uh, for some weird reason, our female in that group, it's a one-to-one, -one, and she only lays one to two eggs a year. But they always come out looking really gorgeous. So That's awesome. we hold them all back, and only a couple of lucky hands got on some offspring. And this is one of them here. How many eggs do they normally have? They should lay about four to five clutches of two eggs. Four so, to five clutches of two eggs, yeah. and she's only done two a year. Yeah, two, two eggs a year. But when they look like good. this, you can't really complain. I, yeah. I take two like this over Absolutely. ten of a lower quality. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. It's so pretty. Yeah. And, that and famous. One of those, right? Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna sneak now. <laughs> Take cherry bombs. You're stairs. talking about your security earlier. You shouldn't have let us in here. <laughs> All right, so that's awesome. It's really cool. Famous gecko. We got autographs. You know, it's great. We'll be selling the autographs of this, this little guy. Yeah. So Mark, what do we got here? 
We've got some super nice white collar chihuahuas here. Um, you know, the, these are pineal chihuahuas. So there's, there's two forms, there's mainland and pineal. Mainland are a little bit plainer. Uh, the snout is not as long. Uh, the, the, the weight when they're full grown is definitely a little bit smaller. Um, they also don't, I guess, have you know, the value of, of these guys. And you can see why, because they're just so interesting with all the mossy look on them. They're very uh, colorful. Yeah. And <clears throat> what a lot of people are looking for these days is the white collar. So that's, that's an, uh, a very sought after trait is the collar here, which you can see both of these guys have. And uh, that makes them more valuable. Just because people seem to want these and, and there really are not as many exhibiting the white collar as there are you know, ones that, that do not. So these are very similar to like Luciana, it's just a little smaller, right? I guess so. I mean, mm -hmm. the difference would be they have a, a prehensile tail, which the Lichianus sort of has, but not really. I mean, not, not, the same, not to the same extent. Um, they get not nearly as big. They're more of a slender species, um, but definitely as rewarding as a Lichianus and as interesting to work with. Uh, and also, as far as uh, laying eggs, something interesting about the Chihuahua is the eggs are very, very thick-shelled and they're usually stuck together uh, in, a, in a clutch of two most often. Very, very hard. Uh, so what happens is sometimes when a, a Chihuahua lays eggs, they make calcium crash very rapidly because of the amount of calcium that's required to shell those eggs. Okay. Um, so supplements are really important for these guys. Very important. That's absolutely true to give them some sort of calcium supplement. Awesome. Um, yeah. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> They're very beautiful animals. So I have a question for you. If, you were, if people are watching or like, hey, I want to get my first uh, gecko, what would you say is like, I know you guys work with a lot of geckos. What would be your, your first gecko, do you think, as a pet that somebody would want to get? Probably a crested gecko. If, if it's the first time you're getting into geckos crested geckos make great pets very easy to look after uh simple care you can use a gecko diet and you know supplement with crickets every you know so often but not needed every day um lower price point also you know you can find any number of pets in, in pet stores uh from from you know simple ones to hobbyist quality you know crested geckos i would say that would be your first step and then from there once you get addicted which you will, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you like geckos, uh, you will end up finding yourself looking for some of the more interesting stuff. And then maybe you start looking for morphs and then you end up like us with, you know, 5,000 geckos. <laughs> <laughs> it takes some, take some time, but... Two, three weeks, she'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, man. Sure. Okay. So, uh, Sarah Sonorum. Go ahead. Are you Sarah, you Sarah ask Sonorum? Sarah is snoring. Okay. Sarah snoring. This is a Sarah Sonorum. This is a uh, very fancy white collar. White collar. The white collar uh, morph has the V and any uh, multiple number of uh, large spots on the back. It's a very beautiful specimen. Mm. Um, How easy are they to keep? Quite simple, actually. Very similar to crested geckos. But to breed them is a little bit of a different story. They actually don't breed nearly as well as crested geckos. They yeah. get a little bit larger than crested geckos. This one is not full size yet, um, but it's a very beautiful uh, specimen. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, again, going back to Alan Rapashi, I got the very first um, uh, white collared uh, Saracenorum that was ever, uh, I guess Producer. given a private private breeders mm -hmm. in you know in North America, this would have been. I'm guessing back in. Uh, probably 2003 or something like that, and um, at that time we paid a thousand dollars U.S. each for a pair. So it was two thousand dollars for the pair, and uh, funny thing is I think they've like something that's you know got this much going on, hasn't dropped its value very much. Like I'd say something that nice probably is about, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars US for, awesome. e for each item. But a very beautiful animal. Very manageable and <laughs> 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 it's 3D. That's, that's, that's what they gotta do. It's 
They wouldn't be able to see it if you didn't do it. Yeah. Here, you want to hold? Yeah, sure. Okay. I want to try to hold anything that bites. There you go. It's not so, going to bite. Yeah, this one won't bite. So these aren't very common in the hobby, right? Uh, they're around. They're just definitely not as common as crusty geckos or gargoyles. And also, uh, the majority of the ones that are around are not the ones with the collar and the spots. They're, they would be the, the plain ones. They come in like a dark brown, no spotting, no collar. Or there's also a blonde form too that's a little bit more orangey yellow. Okay. It's super cool. Where does they originate from? They also originate from New Caledonia. So, uh, <clears throat> funny story, I guess, when I started the business in the beginning, I was focused, obsessed with New Caledonian geckos. So that's the majority of stuff that we work with. And now, you know, we're starting to branch out into a few other things like uh, fat tail geckos, knob tail geckos, blue tongue skinks, uh, you know, other species of skinks like Agurnia. <laughs> Um, am I missing anything? Oh, frilled dragons that we're going to yeah. start working with soon. Yeah, once they get big enough. <laughs> I think we have some bearded dragons. So, we, you know, a little bit of everything. I'll just grab them. Yeah. I was trying to like White lead them. frogs, we're hoping. Other types of frogs. So, oh, yeah, just you playing around some with stuff. Cool frogs. Yeah, just playing around with some stuff. You have some really awesome knob tails and fat tails that, you know, we, so we don't really get to see them like ever. Yeah. And um, it was really cool to see your collection. I don't know if we brought any of those over, but oh, we can run back. We should. Ah, you know. Yeah. Hey, you well, we'll check? show you a few. Okay. All right. Cool. We're gonna sneak a couple peeks of some knob tails. Now you're being really, really careful with this one. Tell us why. I know that you guys are pretty new to the knob tails or like you're just starting up kind of. You bought a whole bunch of them and uh, how long have you been doing it for? Not long, this will be our, this will be our first season. First uh -oh. season, so why are you being so careful with this one in particular? Oh, uh, well this guy's just a little flighty. But this unusual one- Unusual also, it's an asper. Yeah, this one is a, an asper. So Nephris they're, asper. They're very nice. Um, yeah, this will be a new project for us. We've got what two pairs? All the knob tails are gonna be yeah are gonna be new projects for us, and I guess we'll see how it goes. We're just starting with. How much is one of these worth? I'd rather not say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's look at it that. All right. So you these are super at, rare. You can look it up on the internet. Deal. Yeah, these are super rare, and uh, they're real pretty. They have this. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Want to make sure that they're cool. Um, they have this head that kind of just points down as you guys can see and uh, looks kind of like a bulldog, but really awesome. Okay. So here's another uh, fairly uncommon project. I'm not sure how many of these are actually are even right now. This is a uh, um, uh, you husband eye, but this is a T plus albino form. I think uh, Steve Sykes has a pair um, and that's as far as I know. So we just put these two together and hopefully they've done what they need to do and we'll see how that goes. But uh, we're looking forward to working with these ones. They're, they're similar to you, Millie, uh, but a little bit different is in the, the uh, live in forests in different places. <laughs> yeah, and they need higher humidity too. So we'll see how that goes. So what Megan has in her hand here right now uh, you're looking at it, you're probably thinking, well, that's a really pretty leopard gecko. But if you look close, you'll realize it is not a leopard gecko. This is a fat tail gecko, an African fat tail gecko. And what it is, is that's, that's a white out, amel, patternless, uh, male, uh, tangerine, uh, fat tail gecko. So we're hoping for great things from this one this year. This boy is ready to go. And, uh, you can see it's really gorgeous for a fat tail. Yeah. You know, there's a few out there, but not not many right now. Um, yeah, it's definitely really cool. It, and it has that smiley face, you know, that uh, leopard geckos get in some of the fat tails. And it's just really funny to look at. And you guys, everybody sees those pictures of like the the geckos that are just smiling and like having a good time, it looks like. Look at a smiley Perfect. face. Perfect, yeah. So get up in there, Ryan, see that smiley face. Yeah. Get up in there, Ryan. 
Well, he looks annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. We don't, we don't handle them very much. <laughs> Their faces get uh, so expression-filled, like, it's awesome. <laughs> very cute. So here, we've got a pair of almost twins, twin fat tails. And if you look, one's got an orange hue. Uh, they're both ghost patternless, striped fat tail geckos, boys. Uh, but this one is het for Oreo, and this one is visual for Oreo. And you can see the difference. The Oreo has sort of made it sort of a gray color, and this one has kept some of its orange tangerine color. Otherwise, other than that, the two look almost identical. Pretty neat though. And we are very excited to breed these uh, this coming season and see what we produce with them. So cool. It's so cool there's so many morphs and color variations with these guys. Yes, there are. And so we're, we're hopeful that we'll be able to do something good with these guys. <laughs> but again, it's all this is all new stuff for us. It's been a big learning curve to uh, you know figure out the best way to breed these things and how to get going with them. Yep. And you guys can see that they're being real careful and holding them it's because they jump. This one's um, posing. No, these don't yeah, jump. Yeah, yeah. Well, they will run off your hands. Well, they'll, they'll run. run off your hands. Yeah, um, they're... A lot of geckos tend to jump. These do not jump. These are actually, uh, like, they're not arboreal, obviously. Oh. This is not an arboreal species. But they'll... So they'll... But they can run, run fast, yeah, yeah, and <laughs> climb stuff. But you can see they're usually pretty docile most of the time, unless they're hungry. Then they're going to try and nip your fingers, probably. <laughs> okay, so those are those. So cool. Let's see what else... If we have anything else. <laughs> Here we have this video is brought to you by Megan's Hands. <laughs> Hand model. So this is a, a whiteout amel, tangerine. Okay, the whiteout and the amel are obviously uh, genetic traits. The tangerine is based on the level of orange that you see in the gecko. Um, some are tangerine, some are not of the amels. Uh, I could show you some other ones, but basically. I think this is a morph that was a long time coming because at one point people thought you couldn't uh, put uh, white oats and amels together um, because they thought it was fatal. And I believe that there was one line that was. And so people didn't try it for a long time. And now they've retried it and people are starting to do it again. And it's a freaking amazing looking gecko, right? Yeah, yeah. It and almost looks like the pattern's like being cut out, almost yeah. like the pied stuff, but. But definitely not. Yeah, and clearly, it's not it's cool fatal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, doing well. Yeah, but for a long time, fat. yeah, for a long time they thought it was. So that's the story behind these. I think we're going to see more and more of them, and they're just awesome looking. You can't really argue with a nice uh, email with it with a tangerine. And the tangerine color, as I mentioned, is uh, that's a line breeding trait. Okay. So um, put some, you know, the most intense orange ones and you're going to get more and more orange coming out in the geckos. That's so cool. Yeah, same thing with crusty geckos, with reds and stuff like that. Okay. So, we're going to show you one that <laughs> we're going to pretend it's here. We're going to do a close-up of it. It's real flighty. So, what, what is the, this what, one? What are, you, what are you doing with your hands? We're <laughs> holding an imaginary gecko. <laughs> an imaginary 3D gecko. Whoa. <laughs> Right, so what is that one? So that's a uh, Nephris levis pilbarensis. Uh, that one is albino, uh, obviously visual albino. Um, we would breed that to, we have uh, some hets for, so in Nephris levis pilbarensis, there is already now uh, albino and there's also patternless. And there's some beautiful, if you have both traits in them, they're, they're, they just look crazy, like orange, orange. Um, so that's what we're hoping to do. We have a het for, for patternless uh, and albino, and we're gonna put those two together, and then uh, hopefully we get some some babies. That's yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that's a fun project. Cool. Mm -hmm. So this is like I said, this is all new for us. Mm -hmm. Like uh, knob tail. Like so, we we've as as I mentioned before, we focus on rachidactylus. That's been our, our bread and butter since I started, and and we love we love rachidactylus. Um, but we thought it was finally time to maybe try a few different things. And so these are a few different things that we're trying. We're trying um, uh, some knob tail geckos. We're trying some fat tail geckos. Uh, obviously we've been working with the Agurnia pretty successfully. We've been working with Northern Blue Tongue skinks as well. Yep, uh, we could, saw those. Yeah, we could show you an, a Blue Tongue, but that's probably, yeah, it's, I mean, seen them before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. I didn't know that uh, we're taking a lot of your time, so I really appreciate you, you doing yeah. it. So thank you guys again. This is Northern Gecko up in Canada. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna link all their stuff down below in the description. 
and let us know in the comments if you saw something that you really liked or if you had questions about. Also, if there's something that you think that Ryan should buy, because I, you know, but no. <laughs> so if there's things that you think that we should start working with or something like that, let us know. And uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit that notification bell because then you'll know when we're posting stuff. And thank you, Megan. She's actually the star. I don't know if you guys have seen her. She's everywhere. You know, you can send her mail and she'll write like long letters for the newspaper. It's fine. It's great. No. <laughs> no. So I'm a bit embarrassing a little bit. But uh, Mark and, and Megan just were great. And they have an amazing facility and a lot of really, really amazing animals. So thank, thank you. you again. Thank you. And don't forget to get going. Yeah, get going. You gotta check out. To you can call them. It's it's one eight hundred. Get going or one. It is one eight hundred. Oh, one eight. I think it's eight five five. Get going. Eight five five. Get going. Are you gonna flash the number on the screen there yeah. at the bottom? Absolutely. Beep, beep. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs>Say whatever the heck you were saying something weird. So, yeah. <laughs> comment down below about what geckos we should buy. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, what do you got? Do you guys got a bunch of cash with you? Or? We, yeah, yeah well, with so much noodles, no. noodles of cash. <laughs> yeah, and just uh, you know, make sure that Ryan knows that he has to start breeding uh, crickets. Right. He loves. <laughs> was not successful at that for some odd reason. <laughs> Never. Uh, he's, fun. He is sometimes. Okay, so tell us. Do some go. <laughs> Good. All right, oh. so we're, we're here again with uh, okay, we're already here. You were been here for a while. <laughs> we've been here, we've been had here, Time been for done shawarma. it. Time for shawarma. <laughs> so we're gone, uh, we're gonna get out of here.